So what do you think they're biting today? Jigs, crankbaits, softbaits galore? One thing's for sure, today's anglers have plenty of options for catching fish. Big fish, man, big, big bass, wow. Wow, Jimmy. That's a good one. <laughs> a wide range of different lure styles and actions. An expansive array of bait shapes, sizes, and textures and a wealth of colors that would turn rainbows green with envy. What do you think of that profile-wise? I'd say that's pretty close, <laughs> It's man. a pretty good match, man. Yeah. With so many choices at your fingertips, how do you determine the correct combination of lure characteristics that fish want to bite? In most instances, it boils down to one part experience, one part experimentation, and one part adjustment. That looks like white bass candy to me. Looks like a a Pez, and I'm gonna dispense it to him. And by correctly matching your tactics to fish location and behavior, you increase your odds for fishing success. We got a big one there too, boy. Ooh. Oh, there's a whole school of them, Al. Yeah, they're big. These are big whiteys. Wow. These are big ones, man. Look, 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 look at them, there's a whole bunch underneath me. Today, on the edge, we tackle high riding white bass that nail bait fish imitating lures work just beneath the surface. Then, we switch to jigging tactics for largemouth bass, selecting the proper jig designs for fishing shallow cover, deep open water, and practically everywhere in between. Because when you offer fish appealing lure choices, they'll tell you what they want. And when your line goes tight, you'll know you got it right. Come on, baby. No question about it. From ice out in spring to ice up in the North Country, they are unquestionably a big bass producer, but there's a lot of subtleties to catching bass like this. Closed captioning provided by Fishoflage. That looks like white bass candy to me. Looks like a, a Pez. And I'm gonna dispense it to them. This time of year, fishing for these white bass is so much fun because you just get down, Al drops the troll motor and we just crank. You know, we can burn through this, this water and fish it well, extremely efficiently. And when they're around, they show themselves. <laughs> oh, Ooh, they're all around us, man, they're everywhere does it? It really turns into a little bit of pandemonium, doesn't it? There he is. You got yours or? Get on him. I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> oh, oh, look at Al's right in on top uh, of him. You get over, I ain't got him. Oh, yeah. Can you hit yeah. him? Get him, you got him. I know, I'm making a cast. Boom, on the money. No, to the left. Yeah, I know, there's probably a bunch of them up there. Where there's one, there's more. There was a whole pack of them there, man. There yeah, was I know, we're good. I know. There was three of them that followed your bait up, and then there was another three that came in and followed my fish up. Oh, that's a good fish there. Oh, Ooh. it's a nice whitey. Nice whitey. Nice bull whitey. Bull whitey. Any with them? Yeah, I got no, none with them. Oh, yeah, them, there is. Oh, yeah, yep. there is. Yep. Well, let's double that's up. That's a bull one. Do, do, that do, is a bull do, one, Dan. Yep. <laughs> that's fun. Oh, I thought oh, oh, you got it. yours. There's a couple more on them. Look at the size nice. of them. 
Look at that big one. Oh, look at him. Look at him. Look at him. You got a big one, one there, look too, at, boy. Ooh. Oh, there's a whole school of them, Al. Yeah, they're big. These are big whiteys. Wow. Man. These are big oh, ones, man. Oh, look, 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 look at them. There's a whole that. bunch underneath me. Look at this. Wait till you see this white bass. It is oh, yeah. a look absolute boy, tanker. Just a school of tanks oh, up there, man. Look at that. Dan and I came to this lake to fish some walleyes and white bass for the next couple of days. Good body of water. You know, we fished it before. And uh, we came to do a little beach. He's got another big whitey that back there. And these are nice white bass. Look at the size of that thing. And we didn't have exactly what you would call the most ideal uh, uh, walleye conditions, bright sun, real calm. We will fish the walleyes maybe tonight or tomorrow if the wind picks up. But the white bass been going so good, so we figured we'd open up and go jerk a bunch of these. If you could catch 50, 60, or 70 of these in a day, what would you do? Probably the same thing we're doing. White bass, when they're hot, they're hot, baby. No. Oh, oh, that's no. a big white. Oh, he's on it still. Get him? There he is, yes. That was so cool. You're, you're gonna weigh a lot of them and you yeah. take the whiteys, I'll do the walleyes. That's for a fine. While. I can deal with that. Come on out here. Show yourself. Boy, that was fun. That fish just blasted it and then came back out. <laughs> came back out and hit it again. The bait just popped up and then whoop, inhaled it like a smallmouth. I gotta be careful. These guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy, easy. Easy. Easy you, watch you. Yeah, I don't I want to be pulling hooks out of you. I know. Yeah, but especially with these little baits, boy. You gotta be so, these are the ones that get you, these little guys. Look at that fish. Beautiful whitey. Those fish are so aggressive, you know. They came out to spawn a little bit ago and now they're getting out on these uh, main lake points and stuff like that and running a lot of this bait fish down. You'll see them up cruising around. You'll see pods of these shiners and you cast right into those pods of shiners. Twitch, twitch, boom, they're on it. Fun. White bass are native to the Midwest and Great Lakes regions, although their populations have expanded into many rivers and reservoirs in the southern U.S. They spawn during the day in the spring with water temperatures between mid 50 degree Fahrenheit and mid 60 degree Fahrenheit. Pre-spawn white bass tend to move up tributary creeks and rivers, although they will spawn along windswept shorelines if flowing water is not available. Once post-spawn white bass disperse back to the lake, they school heavily and tend to suspend and feed near the surface. Small white bass chiefly eat plankton and insects, while larger fish typically roam open water and feed on minnows like shiners and bait fish like shad, pushing and trapping them against the surface. They also pursue and pin bait fish against shallow rock piles or shorelines like the fish we're catching today. It truly does not take lots of skill to catch these things when they're going. With white bass, it's important to remember that these fish are forage-driven predators. They don't care if the bait is suspended or near structure. They are eating machines that simply follow bait fish. It's pretty simple. Find the forage and you'll find the fish. Go out and check this out. I snagged <laughs> one of the little shiners that they're feeding on. And uh, <laughs> what do you think of that profile wise? I'd say that's pretty close, man. <laughs> it's a pretty good match, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's unreal. Unreal the color patterns that Rapala puts on their baits. I mean, it's they're so lifelike. I mean, that thing to that thing. I mean, give me a break. <laughs> Unreal. No wonder why they're inhaling it. There he is. That was him right there. You might get it. There's a little patch of them here, Daniel. Yeah. Oh, he's on him. Oh, oh got a good one. Five good. of them. Nice. Look at that. Got, got a good Look one. Look at that. Hey, watch this. <laughs> you got watch yours? This. Watch this. My bait come in here. Look at that. Look at that. Is he on it? Oh, yeah. They swirled around. They just flipped out here. <laughs> Come here, baby. Oop, he's on it again. Is he on it? Yeah, there he goes. You got now yours? Double up. I love it. Uh, yeah, you I have love it. it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these fish are incredibly uh, adaptable. You find them all over the country. They're in lakes, they're in rivers, they're in, they're in reservoirs, they're in clear water, uh, they're in dirty water. They adapt really, really well. In fact, the best 
and biggest white bass fishing I've ever experienced myself was in Canada. I know a lot of you are saying, in Canada, if you don't live up there, you think, white bass in Canada off of Lake Winnipeg. I mean, three and four pounders. I mean, just giants, absolute giants. And in North Dakota, Devil's Lake has got them. You know, it's a really big fish. Got that guy on a number seven clacking minnow. Small little bait. Let's take a look at some of the premier baits for catching whiteies like that. Many lures work for white bass, with most sharing a few key attributes. Whiteies suspend near the surface, so stick with lures that either run shallow or can be fished barely subsurface by holding your rod tip high during the retrieve. Small jigs tipped with soft baits, inline spinners, and shallow running crankbaits are obvious choices. All yeah. imitate <laughs> modest sized minnows or bait fish forage and can be retrieved horizontally near the surface. White bass often reveal their location by rising to and breaking the surface when feeding on bait fish. Cast directly into their mitts and begin swimming the bait back to the boat. Today we're primarily using two lure choices. There he is. There, there, there. Good one. Okay. The first is a number seven clacking minnow, a slow sinking minnow imitator with a single steel ball that clacks back and forth in an internal metal chamber, alerting nearby fish to its presence. Ooh, big whitey. Oh, here, I, I will oh there's a couple of them in there. Yeah, I Look got at him. Him. They're I trying got to rip the bait out of his mouth. I got Look at it. Oh, two for one. The second is a rip and wrap, which is filled with small BBs that loudly whack against the internal walls of the lure as it vibrates during the retrieve. Although fairly small in size, it's a heavy lure that you can cast a mile to reach schools of aggressive white bass breaking the surface. Oh, there they are, Al. Where? Like, there he is. Oh, there's another one right there. Oh, he was there. Whitey? I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, there's a couple of them in there. Get him. There he goes. Nice. Boy, that was fun, huh? <laughs> Look at the seals fish following him around. Look, like there was almost like a walleye following it. These Maybe. were almost, they, these are fun catching here, man. Oh, wow. Look at them. Yeah, Al, there's four or five of them Holy circling smokes. the boat here. Look at, look at this one. Look. Ah. And then they're all over the place. Yeah. Do you need a player? So you got it. Uh, I got it. Look at that white bass, huh? You know, like we've been saying all day, whoa, easy, easy, easy. These fish are abundant. They're in a lot of different watersheds. They, uh, they're about the same size as some big crappies. They got the attitude of a smallmouth and they fight like a muskie, man. Hey, for more detailed information or to purchase any products you've seen on this show, go to lindermedia.com. Big one. Big one. Big one. Yeah. Nice. Ooh, that. Ooh. Oh, that. Oh, woo, woo, woo. Come here, buddy. <laughs> nice. Come here. Look at that guy there. There, Jeremy. That's wow, a tank. Wow, that is Boy, a look at the tank. Size of that one. Come here, buddy. Oh, big, 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 whoa, big no, fish. That is what I call a giant bass. Look at that thing. No question about it. Right now, Jeremy and Smith and I are going to look at strategies for catching bass on probably one of the best bass baits ever designed, and it's known as the skirted jig. No question about it, from ice out in spring to ice up in the North Country, they are unquestionably a big bass producer. Look at that thing, that's a big northern bass. They don't come that, that big in this region too much. It's about, I will probably only catch, you know, three or four of these throughout the course of a year. That's a big one. Nice big bass, Jim. Big bass. Whoa. Whoa, that's a whopper, huh? Just came right out of that little piece of cover. Oh, he gave me one more, one more little jump. I like that. This is the time of year right now. It's early June. The fish got done spawning not too long ago. Actually, some of them are still on beds. We got a full moon coming up. But a lot of that cover that you traditionally bass fish in summer, it's still early summer right now, 
is not very developed. At this time of year, cover is absolutely king. This lake has wood, it's got bulrushes, it has bog edges, it has tons and tons of different cover. But the ticket to finding these fish right now is accurate jig casting. This is target casting for big bass. You want to get big ones, you got to put it where the cover is. There we go. Right out of that deep wood. Nice big bass. That one, there Ooh. You go. Ooh. I like that, huh? <laughs> that. A little bit of a deep, Woo, deep water cuts in yeah. right there. Yeah, it's deep wood in there. Ooh. Uh, yeah, that's a nice one. The average fish we're catching today is unbelievable. This is pretty awesome. And the areas that we're looking for right now are those areas that you find just outside what you consider to be spawning bays. This particular zone right now is a big, this, this whole shoreline is covered with trees and bulrushes and all kinds of stuff. But you go around the corner and it's one of those shallow, dark water bays. It's got some sand and gravel on cut bank. That's where the bass were spawning, or a lot of fish were. And now they're done, starting to pork up. Some of them are, and they're out here in this stuff. That's where you look for them. Look for them just outside of those bays this time of year. Bruisers, man, and they love the cover. You gotta throw a jig to the cover. We've been fishing relatively shallow water cover. The fish are anywhere between probably about three and six foot of water. We've been using three eighths to half ounce jigs. Uh, one thing that's really critical is, is figuring out drop speed because the drop speed a lot of times can ultimately determine how many fish you catch. If the fish are inactive, no question about it, slower drop speed or in other words, lightening up the jig can trigger more strikes. On the other hand, if you can get away with it and the fish are relatively active, you want to be able to fish a heavier head. And the reason for using the heavier head is very simple casting accuracy and your ability to cover more water. As you can see in back of us, we have miles of this and miles of different spots to target. With a heavier bait, I can actually just move through here, put the trolling motor on about 20% and quickly just dab along, drop the bait into a specific spot, pick it up, flip it to the next spot. It enables you to cover a lot more water really quickly and hence catch more fish if the fish are willing to bite it. We literally carry pounds of different bass jigs in the boat. Today, jigs are refined baits with different head shapes, hook sizes, angles, and skirt thicknesses for specific fishing techniques and cover conditions. The classic bass jig, like Terminator's Pro Series jig, comes in weight from one quarter to one ounce. This jig has a conical bullet head, heavy weed guard, wire trailer keeper, and a free swinging rattle system. It's a good utility jig when fishing heavy mixed cover conditions. Swim jigs are designed for long distance casting around sparse cover conditions. Swim jigs come with a balanced swimming head, a thinner skirt, and a 30 degree bend hook. This is a great bait for combing shallow to mid depth areas with sparse cover. Football jigs are designed for an interesting bottom dragging tactic. In general, they have a unique football head designed to roll over rocks on a slow retrieve. These jigs shine when bass are positioned on mid-depth to deep water rock and sand bottoms. Last but not least is the finesse jig. Finesse jigs are lighter and smaller baits which are particularly effective when fishing inactive bass around sparse cover. There, got him at yeah, that time. <laughs> yeah, a little bit better one there. Yeah. You see what I mean? That's pretty fun. Yeah, that was. I like it. That's one thing about a jig, which is really fun, is the way they hit it. Particularly if you're using a relatively heavy bait, so you have a really pretty good contact with the bait, how it's moving on the bottom, and you feel it, and they just go dunk, <laughs> you know, and the line just jumps, you know. That's a pretty healthy looking bass. Soft baits are a big part of all jig fishing strategies. The correct profile depends on the individual jig technique. The classic jig trailer preferred by most hardcore bass anglers would be a flap and craw. In some conditions, larger body baits like a flapping bug may be an advantage to slow drop speed or when bass may prefer a bigger profile bait. For the swim jigging tactic, a four inch grub is a good choice. Flapping craws and paddle tail minnows will also work. 
when it comes to football heads, twin-tailed grubs and crawfish profiles are the soft baits of choice for bottom dragging. Got him? Yeah, big one. Oh. Big fish, huh? Yeah. Oh, there's a book. Big fish, man. Wow. Big, big bass. Wow. Wow, oh, Jimmy. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> I mean, about six, seven foot of water. He was out a little deeper. Boy, look at that guy there. That's a good one there. Wow, tank. that is Boy, a look at the tank. Size of that one. Come here, buddy. Oh, oh, he's a big, big, come big here. fish. Oh, look at that one. There's no question about it. When it comes to bass fishing, few baits beat the bread and butter jig. It produces big bass all over the country from shallow water to deep water. No question about it. Versatile jigging tactics produce bass in nearly all conditions. Learn how to match jig style, tackle, and retrieve to bass behavior in precision bass jigging. Part of our Angling Edge instructional DVD collection available at anglingedge.com. Hey, no matter what Bible you choose to read, and there's a bunch of them, there's more than what you see here, the words might change a little bit, but the meaning never changes. Personally, my favorite Bible to read is the New King James Version. I like the way it's written. Uh, you know, over the years, a number of times that I've been through God's Word, a few of my favorite books of the Bible are Psalms and Proverbs. And uh, it's brought me so much inspiration and direction. Those are the two words that I really want to share with you. God's Word is filled with inspiration and direction. Uh, any challenges that I've ever had to face, I found answers in God's Word. Whether it was health issues, financial issues, relationship issues, there was inspiration and direction. It's all there. Just something to think about this week. Hey, from all of us here at The Edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. We'll see you in the water. Hey, I sure want to take an opportunity to thank all our sponsor partners for making this show possible. And if you like what you see, let them know and support them. For more information, check us out at anglingedge.com, Facebook, or the YouTube channel. Hey, thanks for watching.